Welcome to the ISA James Rosenau Postdoc Fellow webinar and the interview series on broadening engagement with global peace and security. My name is Dr. Evelyn Namakulamayanje. And the topic that we are addressing during this interview is peace and security from the perspectives of the young people. And today I have two young people before me who I will invite to introduce themselves. Hello, yes, uh, my name is Panadi Evan. I am a senior at Paloma Valley High School and uh, thank you for having me, doctor. Hi, my name is Beru Chukunda. Hi, my name is Beru Chukunda and I am a junior at Paloma Valley High School and thank you for allowing me to have this interview. Thank you, Miss Betty. I met Betty and Pinati when I visited Paloma High School in California, and they were introduced to me by their teachers as some of the promising students who are doing well in academics, but also sports. Actually, I got interested in interviewing them because of that aspiration, that pride that their teacher expressed in them. Before we start our interview, I would like to thank you, Betty and Pinati, for accepting to take part in this interview. Thank you so much for your time. And I also congratulate you for all your achievements at Paloma High School. Thank it you. takes a lot of guts and energy to stand out in an academic institution. So I congratulate you. Thank you so much. So, Barry and Pinari, my first question to you is, as younger people, when you look around your society and the world at large, what are some of the issues that interest you and which that they continue existing for future generations, but also what scares you? Um, what scares me about um, this time right now is especially during how people are being diverse and not accepting people for who they are. That's what's really scaring me right now because knowing me, I'm an African American. So I feel like, I guess I'm like a threat in the eyes of people that are different than me. Okay. So you feel like you are a threat. Could you say more about that, Betty, please? As you have seen on the news, there have been incidents with African Americans and how they've been attacked and treated differently because of their color. And that's very much scared me ever since I've been little and been treated differently during like everything, to be honest with you. Okay. Okay. So that is in the US. How about the word at large? even here like yeah for sure the world at large um there's been a lot of trouble like in syria during the war and how they've been being taken away from their homes and how they've also been discriminated because of their race and there's women and children have been taken and just houses have been blown up it's very very sad and traumatic where where did that happen Syria. Syria is one, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and not only Syria, I hear that. And actually we see that every day going on in places like Yemen, uh, the Central African Republic, mm -hmm. Mali, uh, South Sudan, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and so many others. So violence displaces children, families, and the communities. And uh, Pinati, you were paused for it uh, for some time. I don't know whether you heard my question, but I was asking both of you that as young people, when you look around your society and the world at large, what are some of the issues that interest you and what scares you? Um, I think maybe what interests me the most is probably uh, racial equality. Because I feel like at the moment in the society we live in now, I think we are 
uh, the most divided that we have been in a long time. Uh, when you look around, you see so many issues that are happening not only in the US, but all over with the uh, racial injustices. Um, I think maybe my, I wouldn't say I have a biggest fear, but my biggest fear would probably be, yeah, racial inequalities that we face. Okay, that is mostly in the United States, but also globally. Yes. What about when you look around the world? What scares you? I feel uh, poverty in a lot of other nations. I guess it's really bad, you know, some children without food to eat, without a place to stay. And over the past few years and months, it's gotten worse and worse. Poverty is getting worse, yeah. Where do you see poverty? Like, do you have poverty in the United States or it is only out there? It's, it's, it's all over. There's even in the US also there is here. Uh, but in like also third world countries, it's, it's really bad there too. Okay. So given all those issues of racism and poverty, I wonder what is contributing to all that? Have you ever thought about it? Um, I, I would say division among the people. Uh, I feel that uh, people aren't really willing to look and try to understand the other person. Um, I feel like as a society, uh, we have to try to understand each other to be able to advance as one. Okay, thank you. And uh, what gives you some hope amidst poverty, racism, and so many other issues that we face? I would say uh, youth, the youth. Uh, me personally, when I look around and I see the young people, I see uh, a bright future for everybody. Could you say more about the youth giving you hope? Um, the youth, um, I feel that they are the future because they have the ability to change what has been able to change in the past. Um, they have the ability to not allow the cycle to continue and allow for it to be a, a brighter future. Okay. How about Betty? What gives you hope? Um, what gives me hope is, again, as Kamali said, is the youth. Um, I feel that they have seen in the past and have learned from people's mistakes how they can also change the future. Okay. And if someone would ask you that uh, since your hope is with the youth, what should they do to ensure that they cause change? For example, they transform issues of racism and poverty. What should they do? Um, I think they should just learn that people make mistakes and that we can also move forward from those mistakes and then we can move on to a better future. Okay. Peanut, what do you think? What should the youth do? Um, I think that the youth should try and speak up as much as they can more and let their voices be heard so that everybody can see that we don't want what is happening to continue. Okay. When you said they should speak up, speak up with who or to who? Well, to, to anyone that will listen uh, in the age we live in now, social media is a, a great thing. Um, you can uh, post what you have to say on many different uh, platforms and the word can get out anyway. Okay. Are you involved in any activity that mobilizes the youth to speak up? Currently at my high school, I'm in the Black Student Union Club. And in that club, we try to educate and uh, bring awareness to social injustices and Black history within our community. Interesting. 
How about Betty? Are you involved in any? Yeah, I joined BSU my freshman year and I've loved it ever since. It's really opened my eyes to see the differences and how they have impacted people's lives. Sorry, I'm not familiar with the California setting. What is BSU? Black Student Union. Okay, thank you. Okay. And uh, since our conversation is around peace and security, uh, what is peace for you? Peace for me is equality for all, having no war, just having just everybody being accepted for who they are and being gay, um, transgender, Black, white, Asian, Filipino, just everybody just being accepted for who they are. Um, even like any differences like religion and everything, like everybody just accepts and then, yeah. Okay, yeah, interesting. How about Pinati? I would say peace for me is everybody living together as one um, freely not having any issues on anything and being able to accept each other as who we are and what the other person is. Okay, so if we are, everybody will be accepted as they are. How will that transform the issue that you talked about earlier of racism and poverty? Well, for racism, um, that is the main issue. Um, people, they have a stereotype of one race. But as we all know, that stereotype is most likely not the truth. Um, not everybody is the same in that way. So if everybody can take a step back and see a person for who they really are, then I think then we can have peace. Okay. Any idea about that? Yeah, for sure. Um, just like there have been incidents of people labeling Islamic and Muslims as just one thing from what they've seen on the news as being bombers and terrorists, but some Muslims and other immigrants just come to the USA to have a better life for them and their family. Okay. And maybe that somehow addresses my second question is, uh, how would you define security? Or in other words, what is security for you? Security for me is just being able to have a financially good job and being financially stable, having a very nice house, maybe apartment, to be honest. Um, just having a career I love and pursue that and just live my dream of being a nurse or something in the medical field. Okay. Interesting. How about Pinati? What is security for you? Uh, I would feel that security is just being able to feel safe. Um, uh, yeah, being able to feel safe, uh, having a, a good job, stable income, and uh, not having to worry about issues that may come up. I feel like that's what security is. Okay. And uh, have you ever thought about issues like what Greta Sandberg always talks about, issues of climate change? Do you think climate change is also a key issue on peace and security? I feel like it's an issue, but I, I don't know if I would necessarily put it in the category with, with peace. But I feel it, is, it is a strong issue, but I don't know if I would put it in the same category as that. Okay. Betty, what do you think? Um, I feel that it kind of is, but kind of isn't. Because there are people that are struggling from like the heat or like from the cold. Like I would have the storm in Texas. It could have a deal with climate change, but then again, 
not really in a way um i don't know it's kind of a difficult topic okay so given this environment we are living in where we have agreements and disagreements issues of poverty uh inclusion and exclusion what is needed really to create a more peaceful and secure world for everybody what should we do i think to just accept people for who they are and the world would be a better place if everybody just accepted for who they are and just lived in perfect harmony to be honest just um getting to learn more about somebody's side of the story having empathy for each other then we'd be somewhere different than where we are right now um for me, Pinot, what do you think about that question i would say that now is the the perfect time for uh, everybody to band together because I feel that um, it's, it's, it's honestly now or never because I feel like uh, the way things are now with the age that we live in, um, everybody who can are the leaders, uh, they should band together to create a, a more perfect union for, uh, for everybody. If, for example, today you have an opportunity of meeting with your president, Mr. Joe Biden, what would you advise him to do to ensure that he builds a more peaceful and secure America, a more peaceful and secure world? Um, I would... Uh... I would say to, uh, well, I don't know, that's a, that's a tough one. I haven't really thought about that one. Uh, maybe, I don't know if Betty has anything that she wants to say, but uh, I don't know. That is a good question. Um, let me think about that. Um, hmm. Betty, do you have anything to say about that? Um, I have to think about that. Sorry. Cause I feel that he's done a good job of seeing both sides of the story, but like on everybody's side to keep everybody peaceful and not like conflicting, butting heads. But um, that all. <laughs> Sorry, uh, this is a tough one. Tanya, do you have anything to say? Um, okay and my final question i don't know how familiar you are you gave me the example of syria and i gave you other cases where there is war what should we do as a global society to end war so that then for your generation after 20 30 years you will live in peace i would say to I would, because to me, war I feel is 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 most is pointless in most cases. Um, I would feel that before it gets to that point, I feel that the the leaders of those nations should try to come to a, a mutual understanding of where they lie, without having to resort to a war. Okay. How about Betty? I feel like war is all about dominance and ego, and I really don't think it's necessary. But some situations, uh, I guess, but not really, to be honest. Uh, I feel that 
if people just found the common ground of having an actual one-on-one -on -one conversation instead of just resorting to war, then we'd actually get some place in this world and we wouldn't have to have all these guns and making new weapons and just killing innocent lives. Thank you. How about which kind of education should be offered to people like you to ensure that you grow up with the values of inclusion, justice, peace, I feel like starting from the roots and changing the history books of what we're learning in class today, because some of them are not speaking on like the real subjects. They're kind of like, what is it called? Um, mellowing it down so it suits the district and other parents that could get angry for what their kids are learning. But these issues are real and I think everybody should be talking about them. But could you say more about that, the books that you are using uh, and some parents being angry with the information that is being fed to their children? Um, I feel that um, the parents, they should, they've been given this image of how they want their kids to be from their parents and their parents before them. They've been glued to this facade of how they want their kids to be. So I feel that they, in the books, when they actually say the truth, they don't want to accept the truth. So they just get angry because they know what's truthful. Hmm. Which category of parents are those, mostly? Mostly Caucasians, um, mostly just Caucasians. Okay. Yeah. Because the Black people, they want their voices to be heard and learning from the past can actually help build a better future. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. How about Pinati? No, uh, yeah, I agree with what Betty had just said. Um, I feel that um, to, in order to move forward, we have to actually look back at what happened so that we don't repeat. And I feel that the, the school system doesn't allow us to really see how things really are. They kind of give us an image, but they don't really let us see everything. And I feel like if we were able to see how things really are, we would, that's what would really help us to move forward. Okay. And uh, this is going to be my final question to you. Uh, what did you think about the events that are running now in the U.S. about racism, uh, that especially the ones that started with the killing of George Floyd? What do you think about all these events, Black Lives Matter, uh, stopping refugees from Latin America uh, from entering the U.S.? What do you think about all those events? Um, I feel that... Um... Uh, as tragic as the passing of George Floyd was, that was the spark that kind of lit everything on fire. And it allowed people to finally see what was going on with uh, the police okay. brutality. And that, along with that, it allowed people to look at different topics, like such as <laughs> oppression, and see how people are being oppressed. And I feel that it was it was a step forward for as for people to see that things need to change. And when all those protests were happening, you saw thousands and thousands of people standing together as one fighting for a change. And I thought it was, it was a beautiful thing. Thank you. But what do you think about that? I feel that. I guess Panati said it. <clears throat> it was a wake up call from whatever was happening. It was just the straw that broke the camel's back. I feel like it was the last straw and black people were done being discriminated and attacked just because of their race. And I feel that it was very powerful and strong to see all those millions of people marching for the, the guardian angel, which was George Floyd, God bless his soul. Um, but I feel that 
it was something that was bad that happened, but I was happy that happened because it actually started a conversation of stuff that were happening in the U.S. and maybe even all around the world, but the U.S. especially. Thank you guys for once again for accepting to take part in my interview. And I wish you all the best in your studies and your future dreams. I wish you a great weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.